Hey guys, welcome back. Got a really cool video for you today. Um, took out my Komodo and my Lumix and I finally put these cameras up against each other. It was a really fun test. Um, tried to do some external stuff, some interior lit stuff, just to give a good range of the different kinds of scenarios you might use these cameras in. Um, learned a lot. You always learn a lot, I think, when you're doing comparisons and tests. Um, you know, the two different, they use two different ND filters. So the Komodo, I've got the EF mount, which comes with the internal, well, one of them comes with the internal NDs. Um, one thing I noticed about that on the Komodo is when you get to the higher end of the ND, NDs, then you get this kind of interesting blue tint. It can be graded out easily enough, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a strange thing to look at. On the Lumix, I was using a, like a fader ND, obviously not the most expensive thing. So th that gives the footage kind of a slightly milky quality, but again, you can grid it out. Ideal scenario, I would use a matte box, get, get some proper NDs, use the same ND on each camera so that that's not affecting the footage anyway. But I don't own a matte box anymore. Used to own a matte box. Now I just rent map boxes when I need them because I'll tell you what, I bought that map box and I maybe used it once and it was big, it was bulky and the reality is nine times out of 10, if you're on a smaller, like shoot, you just, you know, interior, like interior NDs on cameras these days, you're gonna take that over carrying around and lugging a map box and glass which can break. Now, if I'm on like a bigger shoot, we're usually renting lenses anyway and we'll just rent a compatible map box for that lens like system so that's kind of I just don't own a matte box anymore because it's I just I never used it but it would be really it would have been better to use the same NDs on both these cameras so you know ideal scenario I would do that but I graded these clips to match as close as I could I could show you the LUTs you know just the basic LUT and I will do that a little bit I'll show you some like Komodo LUT versus the Panasonic LUT I've graded most of these clips to match and I think, you know, that's the better scenario here because that's what you would do. You would be grading these things to match. So this is a test to show you the difference when we try to make these cameras look like each other. Now, I love both these cameras. Fantastic cameras. I am not a camera fanboy in any way, you know, each their own. I will use any camera, you know, I'm, I'm not going to turn around and be like, gotta use this camera, always this camera because... I love tech, so I love all these different cameras. So, you know, I, these are just the two I picked and I love them. I love the Lumix, it's a great camera. Like, I'm so impressed with this camera. Love the Komodo, like, there's a lot to love about these cameras. Now, one cool thing, I'm putting ProRes RAW up against Red RAW because with the Lumix doesn't come standard built in, but you can pay to unlock the ProRes RAW and that is, um, via HDMI, so you still need like the Atomos Ninja or the Blackmagic, and you can un obviously unlock Blackmagic RAW. Um, I went with the Ninja just because I picked it up secondhand, cheaper, like 350 something like that, um, reasonable price. And yeah, it's, I love it. I, to be honest, I, I think that ProRes RAW, it's been really nice. I've never used ProRes RAW before, so it's been really nice using it on the Lumix. Um, there's not a huge amount of settings in Premiere Pro for ProRes RAW at the minute. That's my one thing. You know, you really just get an exposure slider and that doesn't really correlate to like what what that what that's doing to the to the exposure. Like I would much rather have like a guide with stops on so I knew how much I was increasing or cutting. Um we good to get some white balance options as well. I'm I'm sure eventually it will come to Premiere. I know if you take the footage into Final Cut X then you get so many more customizable options, but I don't use Final Cut X to, to edit anymore. And you know, DaVinci, DaVinci, you can't even use ProRes RAW in DaVinci yet. So I don't know if that's gonna come because of the whole Blackmagic RAW thing, but I hope it does because I grade in DaVinci and you know, having to convert my footage from ProRes RAW to like a, just ProRes seems almost counterproductive. Like. I figure they'll they'll probably bring it in eventually. Blackmagic are pretty good with that stuff. I'm hoping, you know, fingers crossed if you hear me, please bring it in because, you know, we still use Blackmagic RAW, use ProRes RAW, just give us it all. So why did I do this test? Because I think it's just interesting, you know, it's, it's cool to put cameras up against each other, even if the camera 
is way out of the other camera's price range. I love kind of just putting them next to each other. And I think, you know, this day and age, especially now, you're seeing less of a gap between them. Like, and it's just fun. Like, it's fun to see, you know, straight out of the camera, like the Lumix gives beautiful colors. I'll say that. It's, it's really nice natural colors. Like, the reds obviously got more clarity. I actually put up a comparison on, I think, Instagram and just let people vote. And I was kind of surprised because I, I figured, you know, the smaller resolution on Instagram, not really being able to see the clarity. I thought people would go for the Lumix, weirdly, but they didn't. They went for the red. Um, but I mean, the red, like they're, they're both beautiful. Like both these cameras shoot amazing footage. And I'm sure if we put these up against like later in the, in the month, we're going to be doing Komodo versus FX6, which is going to be fun. I know the FX6 is a great camera. I've seen some beautiful footage from it. Um, another thing, actually, these cameras are different in terms of the Lumix is full frame and the Komodo is Super 35. So on the Lumix, we had the 35 millimeter Samyang lens, which Samyang, very cheap lenses, really nice lenses, shot a lot of beautiful stuff on these lenses. On the Komodo, we've got the 24 to try and match that field of view, basically, so that they look kind of similar. Um, I'm sure you're going to be able to tell these two apart. I mean, the depth of field is a big giveaway. But, you know, come into it. See what you think. Just, yeah, give give them a chance. See, I'm going to do some blind comparisons first, I think. Um, just to see what people are leaning towards. See if there's there's a particular one that you favour. And I'm really intrigued to see what you guys think. Um, you know, just what you like. Tell me what you liked. Tell me what you didn't like. Yeah, I think it'd be cool. I think it's a cool test. I think you're going to like it. I think you're going to like the footage. Um, I'd love to do even more footage, but, you know, I've got to get a video finished and released to you guys so you can watch it. So that's it guys. I hope you like the test. If you haven't already subscribe, because we've got some really cool, exciting things coming up. Um, some really cool videos. 
We're going to be doing some more collabs with films by AW as well. So that's going to be fun. If you haven't listened to the podcast, listen to the podcast. We just did a really cool um, gaming episode because I love gaming um, and Anderson loves gaming. And we were like, you know, we talk about films a lot. Let's talk about gaming for just a spin-off episode. Um, I feel like those two things go together, gaming and films, you know, they go together pretty well. But if you haven't listened to the podcast yet, you can basically listen to it on all the platforms that a podcast is on. You know, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, everything. It's on everything. And I think we just did episode 14. Uh, we got some really cool episodes of the podcast coming up as well. We've got some special guests, some really fun special guests. Really enjoying doing the podcast. So if you guys haven't listened to that, then subscribe here because we also put the video version of it up here. Um, episodes are about 30 to 45 minutes, something like that. So not too long, but yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, do all those things. I'll catch you next time.